Hey everyone, it's Skippy. Today, I'm going to go over everything that I've noticed of Stardew Valley 1.6. I have not read the patch notes, or rather, the only things I know from the patch notes are from Concerned Apes Twitter posts, or me getting spoiled in other ways. So be warned, there are spoilers ahead. Anyway, let's jump into it. When you're creating your farm, there's three new things in the menu. The first being the new Meadowlands farm, which Concerned Ape told us about one day before launch. This was super unexpected, and it really gave me some thought on what I would be doing with this new land. The Meadowlands farm already comes with two chickens and a small coop. This is a huge game changer for a new farm for many reasons. It will save you 5,600 gold, 300 wood, and 100 stone, which is huge when you're starting out in the game. Not to mention the time to procure these items and stamina it will exhaust to collect them. This new land is perfect for animals, has chewy blue grass, but it isn't that great for crops. However, if you look at this image of the entire farm, you'll see that there is a sizable piece of land for crops near the bottom left. And the second thing you'll notice in the menu is that there are brand new accessories to wear such as a red nose, a darkened anime expression, which is what I like to call it, a blush, some wacky eyebrows, and many more new cute things to give yourself more character. And of course, one of the best new additions to your farm is that there are two more dog and cat breeds to choose from. They are so cute and it was really hard to choose one for our playthrough, but we ended up choosing this cutie with the bandana and named him Togo. If you choose the new Meadowlands farm, you'll start the game with a newly styled home which includes a dresser. This is really nice to have right off the bat because buying one can be more than a thousand gold and that's if you're lucky at the traveling merchant. And instead of getting your normal 15 parsnips at the start of your game, you receive 15 pieces of hay to feed your two new chickens. Now, the coop on your farm will always be placed here, just left of the path toward Robin's house and the caves, and it already comes with a full fence and gate surrounding the coop. And as you can tell, they definitely do have blue grass, but I will say that I was expecting all the grass to be blue, so I'm hoping there is a way, like normal grass, to grow the blue grass in large capacities because it's so pretty, especially at night. And one more thing I want to say about the chickens is that they come pre-named. And from what I've seen online and ours that we got, they're always named in sync with each other. So we got peaches and papaya, which is super adorable. All around the valley, you will find a bunch of new waterfalls, including on your farm, north of Jojamar, and in the south woods near the sewer and the Misel Hats guy. These are absolutely stunning and provide a nice, quiet waterfall sound that I find really pleasant and not overpowering in any way. And the animations for them are really cool too. I'm so happy that they added waterfalls to Stardew Valley. It was something I love and that I needed, but I did not know that we needed. There are new giant trees south of your farm, which you can actually walk up to one of them and the mouse does change shape when hovering over the bottom. It does this on all of them, even the unreachable ones. So that has to mean something, right? But I certainly hope it doesn't mean this, because that was my first impression. Behind Jojamart, there's a new area to explore where a strange wooden structure lies. But luckily, I do have an answer on what this is later on in this video. Over at Marnie's, there's a definite change in her pasture for her animals. Some people were saying it looks smaller or larger, which I think it looks a little bit bigger. And there's grass growing there too for her cows, which wasn't there before. I've seen a lot of people say that the game looks more detailed in general, including the water and its movement. I can't say I've noticed this specifically, but when getting into the game, it did feel a bit different in general, which might be what they're talking about. And honestly, some of the colorations seem a little bit different as well too. And I did find this image online comparing Emily's previous portrait and her 1.6 portrait, which if you look closely enough, you can definitely tell there's some new details to her face, hair, and outfit. I personally like this change, and I would like to think that Concerned Ape and his team changed a lot of small things in this game, texture-wise, that we might not notice on our own, or ever. Jellies and pickles now have a distinct look to them. Wine and juice also has a unique look to it as well, based on what fruit or vegetables you place inside it for both of them. Now, I don't know if this is specific to this update, or based on platform, but when playing multiplayer, we were unable to pause at the same time to make the game time pause. This was and has been effective on the Nintendo Switch split screen, but for Steam, it doesn't appear so. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. Another thing that I don't have any footage to show is the fact that void eggs are now poisonous. Concerned Ape made this true in his first post update to the game. 
I am saddened, but at least we can drink regular mayonnaise now. Just be careful it's the right one when you go to drink it. There's also some new dialogue from different characters that you'll have to keep an eye on as well as you go through the game. When you check the calendar, there is a new mystery festival which apparently is quite difficult to unlock on your first year, so I am assuming it is in the desert. It's kind of neat that they give you a taste of something that you have no clue what you're even looking for yet, so it's kind of fun. It's like a scavenger hunt. I'm assuming if it's in the desert, it might be like its own version of the night market. Second on the calendar, you'll notice that there are two days where a bookseller is in town. You can find the bookseller right above the Joja Mart building on those days, and he sells different books to help you gain skill level. Each book, which they're all really expensive, are named respectively for what skill they assist in. I mean, look at this thing. Horse the book. You can't get any more specific than that, and I love it. I am here for it. And pay attention because this book increases your horse speed and there are other books that increase your running speed, which is extremely beneficial and not something we've ever seen before. Well, besides if you drink coffee. At this time, it appears they will give you one skill level no matter where you're at in your current level. And in case you're worried about the price, you can find these by cutting down trees and in the mines too. I actually found two in my first 30 days, Mining Monthly and a combat book. The animation when you consume it is really smooth, and I think it's really cool. Oh, that was so cool. That was like the coolest animation I've ever seen in my life. And regardless if you're using a book or not, when you level up in any skill, you'll get this notification in the corner that lets you know what to expect when you hit the hay later that night. The tabs for all the game related things have been changed too. They've modified the spot at the bottom for all your skill levels and masteries and added this section to check your progress on the community center so you don't have to go through each one and figure out which ones you haven't completed yet. Another new tab that has been added is this one for your animals, which lets you know how much they love you and if you've pet them that day. Sorry Togo. There is now a new tab for special items and powers. Right off the bat you'll recognize some of these hidden items such as the Skull Cavern Key, the Sewer Key, and the Mr. Chi Club Card. And I don't know about you, but it looks like there's a lot more in here than we had before, or at least that is now becoming something to track. The map tab has had a major upgrade too, because not only does it change the colors per season, but when you're in multiplayer, it is much more intuitive to where everyone is at by seeing them move in real time. Quests will pop up by the journal when you've began to make progress on them, which is good because you won't have to keep going into the journal to keep track of where you're at. Pets, as we've seen so far, are a pretty big part of this update, but one thing you'll find out quickly is that Marnie actually sells cat trees and dog houses for your furry little friends. And Robin sells extra bowls to be built, though for a hefty price for a new farm with that 25 hardwood ingredient. But this means once you get new bowls, you can collect as many pets as you can, including turtles. Which is something I got spoiled on, but that's okay because they're really really cute. And don't forget to put a hat on your pet as well. There are new craftable signs that let you write a quick note for yourself or for your friends, and I think they're incredibly valuable. There have been four new crops added to the game that you find at random when digging up new spots and breaking boxes in the mines. In spring, these are carrots, summer is summer squash, fall is broccoli, and winter is powder melon. They each vary on their growth time, but it's nice to see some new crops in the game, and ones you don't have to pay for. And the carrots specifically are great because you can now feed them to your horse, which will gain affection and a nice 0.4 speed increase for the rest of the day. When you're fishing, you now have a chance at finding river jelly and sea jelly. The water-based jellies are nutritious and provide you with one fishing for 7 minutes. There's also a cave jelly that you can find, which gives you plus one luck for 7 minutes. All over the valley, you now have a chance to find mystery packages. I will be honest and say I didn't find my first one until fall but I've heard and seen they're actually fairly easy to find. You can take them to Clint's and he will open it for his usual fee. The rewards inside are quite promising in comparison to regular geos. There's a new summer weather event called Green Rain. This is programmed to trigger sometime during your first summer, for which the day can be random. Moss trees will sprout overnight, giving you more opportunity for wood and plenty of opportunity for moss. You can also find fiddlehead ferns during this time too. And of course, visually, it's something out of a horror movie. Everyone in town is freaked out and has a different dialogue for that day, and it was really difficult to run around and talk to everyone during these trying times. This event may mean no harm, but you'll definitely see some interesting things out there. As I just discussed, moss is a new item you'll find very quickly growing on trees. The longer the moss is on the tree, the thicker it becomes and gives you more when you hit it. 
Moss can be used for a variety of things and has replaced other items in previous crafting recipes such as Speed Grow, which makes it much easier to craft now. There's also new items such as a mushroom log, which will provide you with mushrooms on occasion. Definitely check out new and old recipes to see how they've changed with the addition of moss. In summer, there is a new mini festival called the Trout Derby. You can find the event taking place south of your farm at the river. There are many non-Stardew Valley people taking advantage of the event to fish. They all have their own unique dialogue, and by catching fish, you have the opportunity to get golden tags which can be exchanged for prizes. However, I was unable to get any this time. This event runs two days, and it runs all day. Starting Fall 17th, you'll find lanterns in the graveyard. These have been implemented before, but now they provide light at nighttime. You can take these home with you if you want, but I'd advise against disturbing the gravesite, because you never know. The bookseller I talked about earlier visits monthly on different days, where you can eventually sell your books to him for a major exchange, such as fairy dust, which helps productivity on your farm. This is great because it means he'll continue to be useful even after you've collected all the books. When I was exploring, I walked all the way to the edge of the bridge by the quarry, and upon my inspection, I spotted what looked like to be coal ores. I haven't found these in the mines yet, but the fact that they exist is so good because I really disliked having to hunt dust sprites and get only a little bit of coal from them, especially early in the game. Speaking of ores, Concerned Ape tweeted that you can now access Clint's shop in Geode service while your tool is being upgraded. Honestly, this is probably the best one. I don't know how many times I've gone to break my stack of 28 geodes and Clint's busy upgrading my watering can. Now, something I came upon at random was this pot of gold down at the new waterfall by the sewer and hat cellar. Oh, this is so pretty. <gasps> There's- <gasps> Oh my gosh! And at first I thought maybe it was something that was always there to find until I clicked on it and I received 200 gold and a leprechaun hat to wear. I got to thinking maybe if there was any importance to when I had found it, which was spring 17th. Which in real life, St. Patrick's Day is on the 17th of March every year. So definitely don't miss out on this when you start a new game, or you may have to wait until year 2. Something that has plagued me since I first played Stardew Valley has finally been fixed. You can now move your chest with items in it by hitting it with your axe, in the direction you want it to go. Moving chests used to take me an entire Stardew day, now I can do it with a few simple hits. When you complete help wanted quests, including the community board, you may receive a ticket. Tickets can be used to exchange for prizes in Mayor Lewis's house at the prize machine. I don't know if these prizes are randomized by your save, but they are not exclusive to each player in multiplayer. There's a bunch of cool stuff to find in here, and generally are hit and miss on what you're gonna get. But this new item is really awesome. There is a new shrine next to Skull Cavern. It reminds me of Grandpa's Shrine, so I wonder when you've reached level 100 in the cavern, if it will light up and possibly provide you with a buff or item. I'm really interested to see what this is gonna do. Especially because I love going into Skull Cavern. Willie's shop now sells a fish smoker. You can use this new item to smoke one fish at a time with a piece of coal. The fish are two times their base price after you smoke them, and are worth even more if you have the correct fishing and artisan perks. Another new item in this shop is catfish bait, and I think that's pretty useful, especially early game for the fish bundle at the community center. At the back of Willie's shop, you can find a new machine that lets you change your bobber on your fishing line. Honestly, this is so cute, and there's so many to choose from and unlock as you play. If you hit the random bobber button, it will change each time you cast your line, which is great if you really can't decide. Pierre now sells a dehydrator that lets you turn 5 fruits or 5 mushrooms into dried variants of themselves for 7.5 times the base price. As I said before, artisan perks will come in handy with this update. There's a bunch of new items that can be found at the traveling cart, such as new catalogs for furniture, as this retro one. Each catalog has a bunch of new decor items that you can use to decorate your house. New fishing bobbers have been added to the game, such as this sonar bobber, which shows what the fish is on the line when you hook it. There's also a golden bobber and a bait and bobber item that have been added to the game as well. On the edge of the map below your farm, you'll find a mysterious door hidden in the cliffside. If you click on it, it will inform you that you need 5 out of 5 masteries to open it, meaning you need to get all of your skill levels maxed out in order to go inside. Obviously, one of the bigger visual changes we got in this update are winter clothing for NPCs. And I cannot be more excited for this. 
I love the seasonal outfit mods that you can download, but I think it's so great that it's been added to the base game. Out of all seasons, I think this one makes the most sense for the villagers to be bundled up during winter. And I don't know how true this is, but I feel like they stay inside more often too. There appear to be way more decorations during the winter months on people's houses and in the square of the village. At nighttime, these are vibrant and provide a beautiful atmosphere that truly feels like a holiday season. You'll find it interesting to see a winter butterfly to fly across your screen, especially in the dark. These are so cute and bright at nighttime. Grass no longer disappears in winter, however it does not grow, so now there is no need to rush and cut down all of your field before winter begins. Especially when you only have one silo. Joja Colas now provide you with 1 plus speed for 21 seconds, and I think that's kind of cool, especially if you find them in the trash can on your way down to the beach. Why not chug it to get there faster? One of the new mini festivals is a squid catching event down at the beach. It is a lot like the trout derby, however you must meet with the merchant before you go home for the night or else whatever you caught doesn't count for the next day. The event prizes are entirely based on how many squid you manage to catch. Your horse now has reins when you hop on, giving it a more realistic approach to riding. For some reason, it's easier to find pieces of clothing from cutting down trees and going through the mines. We found at least 5 or 6 pieces during our first year. A small change that I think is pretty neat is that you no longer walk to the bus after you buy a ticket. You sprint like normal, and even though this doesn't affect your in-game time, this makes your loading time a bit faster. In this menu, there's a section to show who is your Winter Star gift recipient in case if you forget, which I think is pretty helpful. There are a couple new items you can purchase from Krobus when you unlock the sewers. One of them is Butterfly Powder, which lets you remove a pet from your farm, which is really sad, but I suppose it might be necessary if you get too many of them, and a Wizard's Catalog, which gives you exclusive wizard-themed furniture items for your farmhouse. Robin sells a big chest recipe for a hefty price and a relatively hefty building fee, but when you finally decide to do this, instead of having to move your old chest, you can simply place your bigger chest down on top of your old one, which transfers all of the items into it, popping your smaller chest out to be picked up. This is phenomenal. Also, it's totally worth it, so do it as soon as you can. There's a hidden path on the right side of Pelican Town by Clint's and the museum. If you run up the side of the fence, you'll find it pretty easily. But be warned, you must have an upgraded pickaxe and axe of at least steel to get through the boulder and the log. When you get to the end, you'll find a trash can which will give you the Alleyway Buffet book, which gives you a greater chance to find items in the trash. And for the trash goblin I am, this is stellar. There are a few nighttime events where weird sounds can be heard during your loading screen. And then the eventual wind event. These will happen periodically through your first year and are randomly triggered. And we still happen to have a trigger on winter 27 of all days. After you get the notification that there was a very strong wind the night before, you'll want to check that tree that I mentioned earlier in the video. You'll find it cut down with a notice that maybe it could be fixed with 100 hardwood. How that works, I'm not entirely sure. But once you provide 100 hardwood, it changes into a cute little house and says that someone might move in. And even though I haven't experienced it yet, this is just the beginning. Alrighty everyone, so what do you guys think of Stardew Valley's 1.6 update? Honestly, I love it. I can't wait to explore more and it's a crime that we've received this for free. Let me know down in the comments what you've noticed that I haven't and how your playthrough is going. Subscribe for more Stardew Valley and cozy game content from me and I'll see you in the next one.